He's a good player. Pressure the give to Chapman. Hole touchdown. Here comes a blitz on Cresser, slant to Moss, into the secondary is Randy Moss, he might take it, one man to beat, touchdown! And what a year, a perfect 15 and 0. Nineteen ninety six, a season of great expectations for Marshall, perhaps more than ever before, in the minds of every herd fan, this was to be the year of the national championship. It was a new season, in a new era, under a new head coach. Bob Pruitt, a Marshall player himself back in the sixties, would be in charge of driving that powerful Marshall football machine. He didn't have to do much tinkering with the club that returned sixteen starters, but he added a touch of experience at quarterback and grabbed a hold of a sensational freshman wide receiver who left defenders in his wake. Just what this team needed, a couple of more reasons, to try to become the best one AA football team to ever take the field, period. This team smashed opponents and records and anything that would stand in its way. This Marshall team thundered into greatness by dominating every game. The accolades were many, the records plenty. A Southern Conference championship, two 1,000 yard rushers, a 3,000 yard passer, a receiver who caught 28 touchdown passes, and a defense that smothered its opponents into submission. Let us now take you on an exhilarating ride through Marshall's season for the ages. And you too will be convinced that the 1996 Marshall football team is the greatest one AA team in history. It was perfection personified this championship season. For when history looks back at the 96 Marshall football team, it will remind us that this program can remember a nightmare yet still live a dream. From a plane crash to perfection, this was Marshall's finest hour. Mark the date down, September 7, 1996. On a warm September night, the Bob Pruitt era began, and Marshall began its march toward destiny. You know, I'm an emotional guy. And, you know, uh, uh, the Howard game gave me great emotion inside. I mean, tears were in my eyes. The players didn't realize it, but it's a thrill. It's a thrill. Early in the first quarter, a deadly combination gave fans something to cheer about. Eric Presser for 26 yards to Randy Moss. This was passing fancy. But fate would deal Marshall two blows. Defensive lineman Will Edwards and John Duncan go down with injuries. Duncan would be back. For Edwards, a career is ended. When we got in that first game against Howard, and you know we kind of had some problems defensively, but I guess it was the bumps and road we had to hit with the new coaching staff, and you know, and then John and Will went down. I remember thinking, you know, this is gonna be a long season. You know, we we're not gonna be able to win 15 games without their help. And uh, you know, and Ricky and Paul came in and stepped up and played and played tremendous football. While Marshall's pass rush was depleted because of the injuries, it's secondary at full strength. Big playmaker Melvin Cunningham with a dazzling 28-yard interception return to give Marshall a 24-13 lead. But the herd had to withstand the charge of the Bison. Howard, behind big-time quarterback Ted White, threw two long touchdown passes, and the herd had a slim four-point lead at halftime. Second half, and Marshall moved a leg up on Howard. Tim Openlander's right leg with a booming, personal record, 52-yard field goal. And then special plays make for special seasons. Rogers Beckett not only blocks the punt, he falls on it in the end zone, advantage thundering her. Finally, Marshall was able to shake Howard, and nobody doubted Thomas. On this run, Eric Thomas goes 66 yards for the score. Marshall's debut a route, 55-27 over the Bison. Game two and it's homecoming in September. Former Marshall star Carl Lee brought his West Virginia State Yellow Jackets to town. Knowing full well his team was right in the line of fire, 
Marshall began to look and sound like quiet assassins. Still, the MASH unit was crowded. Edwards and Duncan were gone, and it was the only time all year when you could call Eric Presser lame. A sprained ankle meant backup Mark Zaban would get the call. But once again, the man from Red Jacket wore a red cape instead. Melvin Cunningham in the end zone, a 21-yard interception return for a touchdown. The senior DB, now Marshall's leading scorer. This team was destined for greatness. Melvin was sure of it. We knew what our goals were at the beginning of the year. We knew what it was going to take to accomplish our goals. And we was going to take nothing less than 15 to 0. We've been in the big games. We knew how to handle the big games. And I think you could tell it as we played out there that we didn't get rattled by anything. And then two four-letter words State got tired of hearing. Zaban and Moss. A nine-yard hookup in the first quarter. A 67-yard bomb in the second. Followed by a five-yarder, and this was over at halftime, 35-0. Marshall's defense took the sting out of the Yellow Jackets, and the herd came away with a workmanlike 42-7 win. The roll continued. The team of the 80s met the team of the 90s in game three. Marshall to Georgia Southern, a game of firsts. First away game, first conference game. But Marshall's team realized it was not alone. No matter how far the journey, the fans would follow. On the opening kickoff, Marshall demonstrated it was not a one-man team. Randy Moss with a little sleight of hand to Melvin Cunningham, and the herd is in business. But even when Georgia Southern concentrated, the Eagles realized that Randy Moss flies alone. 42 yards later, Marshall led 10-0. Touchdown, 43-yard pass from Crescent to Georgia Southern's offense utilized a three-back set. Still plenty of room for people like Ricky Hall in the backfield and Billy Lyon and B.J. Cohen. Eagles can't run either. Marshall widened the lead on Moss's second touchdown. A bullet from Eric Presser. Not fatal, but Georgia Southern was wounded. 17-7 at halftime. Marshall would reach into its bag of tricks again. Tim Openlander on for a 27-yard field goal to fake. Mark Zaban takes it around the right side, all the way down to the four-yard line. From there, Doug Chapman takes it in, and Marshall leads at 23-13. In the fourth, the herd proved that big guys like to play catch, too. Jason Wellman, a converted offensive lineman, grabs his first career touchdown pass, and Marshall leaves with Georgia no longer on its mind. 29-13, the final. I think our most important game was uh, being able to go down to Georgia Southern and uh, rather handedly, you know, beat them the way we did. And even though the score didn't end the I felt that we beat them on all sides of the ball, special teams, offensively and defensively. So uh, that just set the tone for our season to let Southern Conference know that, you know, we're ready to, uh, to run through it and then go on to the national championship.